Okay, so what about changing actually which of the flex channels that we are operating? We can do that in this field. So if we change this to, to uh, 22, then we should see the fader is actually shortly moving here because we just changed the channel over. Let's check in Globcon. So um, in, uh, in, in the UI here, let's enable that. 22 would be, oh, let me see. Uh, probably around this one. Okay, so we can see this is now moving around this fader and of course we can control that all because inside of the UI we changed this value. Hello everyone, welcome to this video from Skyhoy Innovation Lab. I'm Casper, I'm the CEO, founder and chief designer of Skyhoy and today I want to present to you a device call for Direct Out Project GMP. That means, a device call means that our panels can work with this audio processor. So what is Direct Out and the Prodigy MP uh, about? It's, um, it's a piece of hardware for applications in live sound, in broadcast, installations, recording and so on. And it's super flexible. It has a lot of flexibility on I.O., dual network audio, DSP functions and same rate conversion. It's also powerful in terms of the hardware it has inside and it's fully modular. That equals trouble on the integration side with hardware panels. But luckily, Skyhoy panels are also flexible and modular. So we have ways to make these two pieces of hardware meet and I'll show you in this video. What I'll show you today is a fully functional, better version of the um, device core for Direct Out uh, Project GMP. And it's bleeding edge. Comments are welcome. I want to innovate this with you. So I, I really appreciate if you can feedback in um, your your comments, your dis, uh, your ideas on the email that you'll find in the um, uh, bottom of the screen. And uh, also in, this, in the text, there's also a subscription link for a um, sort of mailing list that is related to Innovation Lab. Uh, it's just me and my associates that will be at the other end. So you have direct access to the uh, innovators through this. So uh, please subscribe to our um, mailing list and also send us your feedback as you pick it up during this video. But let's look at the um, WaveBoard V2, which is one of our most recent controllers. And uh, it's right here. So it's currently connected to the Prodigy MP audio processor. And what you see right here is a configuration with 32 channels lined up. If you know what that product is about, then you'll know that these eight channels, um, no, you won't know that. I'm telling you, this is eight flex channels that you see right now. Now you're seeing eight sum buses. Now you're seeing um, four master channels and uh, input channels on one of the matrix switches. Um, I think the 16 by four and finally here for the eight by eight. And that is just to show you that we have these motorized faders along with VU meters, along with a mute button on all these. And for those um, places where it's relevant, like on the flex channels, we also have a solo button to enable the solo function that you find inside of Globcon. So if you know this, you know Globcon is a piece of software that um, is being used to control the um, uh, Prodigy MP. And uh, it looks like this. So you should be familiar when you see this interface. So at this point, I want to go in a little bit more into detail because what you see right here are the flex channels and you can see that I've routed some audio sources into these. So uh, you see the same over here on the panel. So let me just split my screen so that you can follow along here. I will just, um, let me see, move um, Globcon a little bit to the side so you can see the faders right here. And then um, these eight channels are the ones that I've mapped down on the uh, wave board. So let's just move that so you can see it. Um, this is a two-way communication, so I can either move this in the software and the faders will go along, or I can move these faders on the wave board and you'll see those are following along in the Globcon software that uh, manages the uh, Project GMP. So that's one thing. Um, we have the mute functions right here. I can, once again, two-way, uh, shouldn't be a surprise, but this is actually quite um, uh, important because this is how we always want to do our integrations to have two-way com communication. So we make sure that the devices and um, uh, the, the, the devices doesn't just change stuff on, sorry, the panels doesn't just change stuff in the devices, but we also read back the status from them so you can have multiple clients. And that's exactly what you're seeing right here. So this is for the flex channels. Now, if we move on to the summing buses, we can quickly find summing buses up here. 
And um, uh, once again, I just chose the first eight. So you'll once again see that we have uh, the faders. We can move the faders uh, all around. We can also enable this. In this case, there's no solo function, so we can't really use that. But we still have these um, uh, mute buttons available. And uh, once again, it goes both ways. I actually want to show you a little bit close up on the panel here how it looks just so that you have a, a chance to uh, to see that. So um, let's see if we uh, turn up the volume on, on this one. You see nice features uh, on the WaveBot V2. You see uh, a mute button and there's a little label right here. It says mute and it's, well, it's also going to show you the status. We have VU metering and there's even peaking involved. So just look at the um, in, in the VU meter, you can see that as I'm turning this, there's a little line that follows along and shows you the latest peak. So that's the feature that we built in here. Then up here we have that solo button, but now I'm just going to change over to the flex channel. So if I turn this one on and notice that we have this label here that actually describes what this and this button does. So that's all integrated inside of this display. And just for the record on the very top, I decided to actually double the encoder as um, output for uh, mainly for the display and for the labeling of the channel that you can see in this display what channel we are operating. And you see this is also changing as I am now currently pressing the paging buttons on the far left. All right, so you kind of get this idea of the each channel, the capabilities of each channel on the wave board um, right here. So you, you should have those things uh, clarified right now. The next pages I was talking about, um, 17 to 24, is the matrix mixer in this case. So the first four I decided to assign to the master faders here. And now, just a word of warning, this may not make sense to you, but luckily you can customize this. So I provide this as an example of how um, which variety of things that we can control. And I'll get back to the configuration in a moment. But what you'll see right now is that I'm I'm managing the um, the master channels, the outputs here. Once again, I have mute, I have uh, solo involved. And uh, for the solo, we can once again do this two ways. If you look at the channels on this side of the controller, then you have these four channels which are associated with the first input channels. Yeah, once again, you will have to decide how you want to map this and we have a nice configuration tool for that as well. And then finally, same thing is going to happen for the MadMix 8x8. In this case, in Globcon, um, we have the uh, eight input channels and we have uh, eight output channels that we are managing. We have uh, the, uh, wait uh, for a second, we just need to go to the right page here. You see, this is the masters, this is the inputs that I'm managing on the panel. Now it's time to look at the configuration and how easy it is inside Reactor. So what you see right here, this UI in front of you is um, the Reactor UI that is running on the waveboard. So really on this panel, on this panel, you find this UI, it's on the IP address of the panel. You see that IP address up here in the top. So it should be uh, really easy for you to, um, to actually access and configure this panel. So on, on the home screen here, you have on the right side, the devices we are connected to. That is the Prodigy MP on this IP address. If you click this title, you can deactivate it, en enable it. You can uh, enable whether or not you want to collect meter data. That is what gives you the VU meters on the panel. You can give it a name and you can select the model. If we had multiple models, we don't. We just have this single model device uh, or support. We also have a device ID and the device ID would be two if we have two of these connected. So the next thing I want to show you is over here. On this side, we have multiple configurations we can choose between. We'll just focus on the WaveBot V2 um, Prodigy MP configuration. That's the one that we are currently running. But you can also choose one called Generic Audio that gives you um, sort of, yeah, that's not relevant today. But that is if you really want to mix and match with other products, you would use this one. And then finally, um, there's one that involves the WaveBot Mini, which I'll come back to in a, in a moment because we can go modular and that's really an awesome feature. And then finally, we have uh, WaveBot Mini with Generic Audio, which is not r relevant today. So. This is where the beef is, okay? This table is your configuration table where you can see the 32 channels that was mapped out on the waveboard. So the waveboard had channel 1 to 8, 9 to 16, 17 to 24, and 25 to 32. 
And what goes on each of these channels is really governed by the table you see on this page, okay? So uh, just a quick way to actually see if this works. Let's change this uh, for the channel number two to red, okay? So let me just create a split screen so that you can see that the second channel we have right here is actually now red. So in this way, I would be able to uh, configure all kinds of things. And let me just zoom in a little bit so that we can see some of these details a little closer. Okay. So for instance, here on this one, the um, the little label says uh, fix one, uh, fix two could be changed, I could write fix a and then you see in this display that little label is actually uh, changed. Uh, I think the label up here in the top is actually coming out of Globcon. Hey, why don't we try? So let's see if we can find Globcon here and then rename our flex channel. Um, I think edit label flex channel 22. Yes, you see it actually changes up here. So that's another little hidden feature that we are reading the labels out of the um, project DMP product. Now that's that's nice. Okay, so what about changing actually which of the flex channels that we are operating, we can do that in this field. So if we change this to, to uh, 22, then we should see the fader is actually shortly moving here, because we just changed the channel over. Let's check in Globcon. So um, in, uh, in, in the UI here, let's enable that 22 would be Oh, let me see. Uh, probably around this one. Okay, so we can see this is now moving around this fader. And of course, we can control that all because inside of the UI, we changed this value to 22. But we won't let it stick there. We'll just change that back to two. So guys, this is really how it works and um, how easy it would be to change. You can also rearrange these. So let me just show you how we could actually swap two channels. So let's swap these. Um, you see, yeah, we'll just swap these two channels around. So that would be done by just dragging and releasing like that. So it's, it's really, really easy to work with the configuration interface that you're seeing right here. So that is um, uh, really nice and uh, useful. Okay, so um, next thing that I would like to do is to show you modularity. And to do so, I want to add a Waveboard Mini. The Waveboard Mini is a product. I don't have it right here today. So we only have the, this physical Waveboard and this is the one that runs the show. But to create modularity, we will have the Waveboard connect to the Waveboard Mini. And luckily, I have an emulation tool that gives us the Waveboard Mini in a web browser. So this is how it looks. Um, so this is like a full uh, it could just as well have been a physical piece of hardware. It will pop up on the network and announce itself to the waveboard. It will find it in a moment. So first thing I want to do is to basically change my configuration over to the one that has been prepared to work with the waveboard mini. So I do that. And now I just need to add the waveboard mini panel add panel and you see that waveboard mini is popping up on my network here. And let's just check if that is actually the IP and port that I'm expecting. It turns out, uh, well, it says localhost, but at least the port number or oh, the serial number looks like it would be the right one. So let's just try that out. And um, uh, let me see if I select, then you will notice that the, the Waveboard Mini emulated panel is going to pop up right here in front of us. And lo and behold, we are already in business here. You see VU meters on the emulated panel is actually working and so on. You know, guys, in many ways, it is kind of more convenient to demonstrate on an emulated panel because I can just zoom in and show you all the nice features on these panels. But trust me, this panel is um, just as real as the waveboard is. And if I had it in physical form, I would just place it uh, just here next to the waveboard and you would have a really nice expansion of these two. So let me just show you how that works. And you know what, it's actually no different from what we have just been seeing for the waveboard solo. So these two being connected, they just they are just governed by a, de a device selector like before I just added um, 96 entries instead of only 32. And that would then correspond to having, let me see, 12, 12 fader channels, there are 12 fader channels on the waveboard and the waveboard mini combined times eight banks that I could page using the buttons here on the side. So what did I choose to do? Okay, now let's see if we could um, 
set up some sort of uh, split screen functionality here once again. So uh, we, I want to have my my uh, waveboard up here, the waveboard mini, and um, actually I want to have it to the other side. So let's see if we can uh, do that. Okay, I'll just have it over here. So now imagine that the waveboard mini is on the right side of the the real waveboard. Um, okay, the first page is essentially all our uh, channels inside of um, or the flex channels here. So um, yeah, maybe this doesn't really work as well as I wanted it to. So the flex channels are here. You can see they're moving inside of uh, Globcon, but let me just go back and show you the full UI with the um, um, Waveboard Mini. Then you'll see on the Waveboard Mini, if I pull the faders here, then they are basically taking over on channels 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then uh, that's it, guys. I did not choose to uh, to map uh, anymore. So if I page on to the next one, I'm no wait. That's actually not true. I decided to move on with flex channels uh, here. So you'll see if if you um, as I'm now pulling these faders, we're actually continuing to adjust to adjust um, flex channels inside of Globcon. That that's what's happening as I'm pulling the uh, faders on on the panel here. Um, that's happening, and uh, it it would continue over here on the Waveboard Mini, where the other one takes over. <sighs> now I've said it a few times, guys. This is just modularity. This is what happens when you take two Skyhawk controllers, puts them next to each other, and they share the same configuration. They become one um, connected panel essentially, and this is how you build, and you can build, and you can build with Skyhawk products, which is a really exciting feature of the whole Blue Pill platform. What you see right now is that I'm paging over. I, I just paged over here, and there we have the summing buses. So if we go to uh, the summing buses view, then I'm adjusting summing buses right now, and you can see that in the software, which I'm doing. If I start doing this on the, the Waveboard Mini, yes, I have um, all these features available to me as well on this one. I'll now move on, and we'll page to um, um, the uh, summing buses from 13 and up to 26. And then now the next paging that I'm going to do will have to be on the waveboard. So when I click this button, you see that we are now uh, working on the um, um, mad mixes. In this case, mix number one, master number three. So that's um, this, this channel right here. Um, let's check this one out in the software. So um, this is uh, the mix number one, master number three. All right, there we go. So we have this one and the other one just next to here. Now, if we wanted to change these, um, uh, the, the mad mix that we're working on, we would have to then dial down into this um, bunch of stuff here and find the mad mix output. And I decided in this case with the waveboard mini, because we have this nice separation with four channels on the waveboard mini and eight channels on the um, bigger waveboard, then why not separate it so that the eight channels would be the inputs and the four channels would be the master outputs. So that's what I decided to do. And you have them right here. So out three is what it's called. So if I wanted this to actually go to the matrix mix or the mat mix two instead of number one, I could just do that by changing right here. Okay. And actually, as I'm doing this, and if we go over to the web UI here, you see that in the emulator, the display is clearly updated. And let's just check out Globcon. So uh, if I pull this handle, no, I won't see this fader move anymore, but I will see it over here because I changed it. Oh, it should have been. I am confused. <laughs> it's this one. Sorry, guys. When I'm changing this, I'm just changing which inputs it is. No, I, I, it's, it's matrix mix two here that, um, that I need to, to change. And obviously it works. Okay, I could s continue iterating like this all day long. I guess you get the idea, the main idea of how we can do this. And in the end of this video, I would like to talk a little bit about what else is in the device core, what is available, because we can configure this and combine it in all kinds of ways. And uh, beyond this table of configuration, it's also possible for Skyhoy to develop configurations that would, for instance, change the matrix mixes by a variable so that we could have a little pager function that says a mat mix one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as you change that on one of these buttons that you find on our panels, like 
imagine this one would be such a paging of Mad Max, then th this would just respond to it. And by the way, these are four-way buttons, so as you press the sides, you can have like encoder action, meaning that you can adjust a value like the Mad Max 1 through 8 f uh, up and down by a single button, which is a really, really cool feature. Those of you who are long-term fans of Skyhoy know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm pretty sure. Now, um, if we click here, no, that's not true. If we click up here and you click the parameter list, then you see this website. And on this website, let's just make it slightly bigger, you can actually study what parameters from the system we have integrated. So for flex channels, labels, post fader levels, post fader peaks, pre fader levels, pre fader peaks, we have output gain, output mute, and output solo, which is what you saw on the channels on, on the panel here. Uh, mute and solo and the fader adjustments, of course. I think right now we are currently mapping the post fader, uh, the post fader levels to the VU meters right there. But this could change because you can see that it's actually available inside the um, device core. For MadMix 16 by four, we have input gain, input levels, input level peaks, we have input mute, and we have also on the output side gain, levels, level peaks, and muting, and solo for the output. The same is true for MadMix 8x8, I won't go through that. But you see for each of these parameters, that's maybe one thing that's nice to, to just notice. Each such parameter has uh, additional parameters, namely, which mad mix are we talking about? Which master are we talking about? And which channel are we talking about? And those dimensions they are called in our universe uh, are uh, obviously differently scaled on the mad mix 8x8 than they are on the 16x4 because in the 16x4 case you have four masters and you have, have 16 channels, which is clear when you look at the inputs up here. It says there are 16 channels. Okay, kindly, kind of technical, but just so you know. And then finally, summing buzzers, where we have labels, post fader levels, post fader peaks, gain, mute, and also routing. And routing is actually something that got implemented because this is how we manage solo. Solo on this uh, product is something that uh, is essentially routing some bus 31 and 32. And Therefore, we also have just raw routing of the sum buses available to you, but it's not in this configuration. I didn't put it in, but it can be programmed onto the panel. Yes, that's it, guys. I uh, thank you so much for following along on this exciting first launch of the Direct Out Project GMP device core from Innovation Lab in Skahoy. And I'm looking so much forward to all your comments. Please share them. Please share ideas for configurations. Tell us how you will use it. Uh, and we'll be working with you on tweaking the last things and bring it out to you so you can really benefit from this integration.